disappearing glaciers and Arctic sea ice, changing rain and humidity patterns, a rising, warming, and acidifying ocean, and of course, our warming atmosphere. They all lead to the same unavoidable conclusion. Our climate is already changing. Fires in Russia, floods in Pakistan, mudslides in China. Though as individual events, these cannot be linked to climate change, they are already showing us the damages that a changing climate can cause. And they're showing us that as a global society, we're not yet ready to cope with those changes. To reduce the future risks from climate change, greenhouse gas emissions of the planet need to stop rising by 2020 and be cut in half by mid-century. This is going to require developed countries to reduce our emissions by nearly 80% by 2050. This requires dramatic changes in the types and amounts of energy that we use. And developing countries also have to set sustainable emission targets. Now this needs to be supported by financing from industrialized countries for low carbon development pathways for most of the world's population. And preparations need to be made to cope with the types of climate changes that are already happening in both developing and developed countries. For CG10, we're bringing together a world-leading cast of practitioners, policymakers, and scholars to explore how action at all levels of government and society can be mobilized towards the action we know we need. Our discussions are going to begin by trying to understand the contradictions in the current international climate negotiations. World leaders talk about the need for a two-degree goal on global warming, but current national commitments add up to four degrees. Developed countries have pledged urgently needed financing to developing countries, but there's no clarity on where that money will come from, how it's going to be dispersed, or how the impacts are going to be monitored and assessed. As a result, the faith that the international negotiations have any new answers to offer is really starting to fail. From international climate policy, our discussions will turn to places where inspiring action on climate is already beginning to happen. We will explore entrepreneurship by businesses, civil society, and governments spanning individual cities through transnational networks. And we will also look at how new multilateral institutions such as the G20 and the Major Economies Forum provide the prospect of targeted successes on international climate policy today. Finally, our discussions will turn to one of the most challenging international governance questions today. How can all of these actors and actions be coordinated across all of these different levels to add up to the tangible progress on climate change that we know we need? CG10 will, of course, not solve climate change, but it will produce some new ideas for immediate action across all levels of government and society. We hope you'll join us on the night of October 1st for the public CG10 opening, and that you'll join us on our website after the event to share in the ideas that are produced.